Hello and welcome to this Apple Script tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how to use Script Editor to write a script that will run as a hot folder, meaning you can drop files into a specific folder and then the script will be watching that folder and do whatever to the files that you've told the script to do. There are a couple different ways you can create a hot folder, but today I'm going to focus on just one. So let's get into it. As you can see I'm already in Script Editor and I'm writing my code. I've started with my on run handler and in this case I'm actually going to just write a comment here because we're not really going to do anything in the on run handler. Um, you can if you want to do anything that your script would require upon startup, but really all of our meat is going to happen within the on idle handler. So I've added that here. I'm going to finish it with a return 5. The return 5 statement tells the idle handler how long to pause until it processes again. So in this case I've said return 5, which means wait 5 seconds, then run the idle handler again. So you can set that 5 seconds to any number, and that's how long it will wait until processing the folder again. Now I've pasted some code in from my last video, which is the resize image width. So I'll use this as the processing that my hot folder will do. I do want to make a change to my script, however. Previously I just modified the image in place, and now we want to move it to an output folder when we've finished changing it. So if I pull up the man page for SIPs, I can see that the dash O option lets me specify a destination. So I'll add that additional code to my SIPs command. I'll say dash O ampersand quoted form of output. And output was the argument that I specified for the destination of my file. The next thing I want to do is paste in another chunk of code that I'm going to use, a strings to list. I've talked about this in previous videos as well, so I'm not going to go into detail about that. I'll paste in another handler, convert path to. Again, I'm not going to cover that one in detail because I've already covered it in another video. All right, now that we've got some of those helper handlers in place, let's start writing our idle handler. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say set input to. After that variable, I'll add the path to my input folder. So I'll just write a POSIX path to the hot folder that I want to define. Then I need to define two other folders. I need to define the output folder and an error folder. The output folder will be where I put the modified files after I'm finished working on them, and an error folder in case I run into any problems, I'll move the original file from the input folder to the error folder. So now I've got three variables, input, output, and errors, and those will be used as I process my files. Now that I've got my input folder defined, I need to get the files from it. So I'll say set file paths to, and we'll write a new handler called get files, and I'll supply it my input path. Next, we need to write the get files handler. So we'll go ahead and say on get files, and then we'll say the path. That'll be the argument we're receiving. We'll go ahead and close the get files handler with the end get files. And as always, I'll add my try block in here in case we run into any problems. Now we'll use the convert path to handler to make sure that the input path was a POSIX path as we expect. So I'll say set POSIX path to my convert path to, and then we'll supply it the path and specify that we want it to be a POSIX path. For the sake of brevity, I'm not going to write an error handler specifically for this function, but I'll write a comment here that I should write one at some point. And then in the event that we run into an error, I'll return an empty list instead of false in this case. Now we need to write the statements for the main part of this function, which is going to say set the files to do shell script and then we're going to use the find command, so we'll say find, and then I'll do ampersand quoted form of POSIX path ampersand type F for file, and then I'll complete the command with exclamation point dash name space backslash quote dot star backslash quote quote. And what that's going to do is say exclude any file that starts with a dot as part of its name. So that will exclude invisible files like .dsstore. And then at some point we need to return our file list. So I'm going to put return file list at the end. Now our shell script with the find command is actually going to return a string with all the file paths. So we need to turn that into a list. So I'm going to say if the files is not equal to an empty string, then, and we'll do our end if. So now we'll use one of the handlers that we pasted in inside our condition. So we'll say set file list to string to list and then we'll supply the string the files and a return as our delimiter so now we have a list of files to process we can go back up and we can say if file paths is not equal to an empty list then we can go ahead and start processing the files so we'll finish our if statement here we'll say end if 
and then inside the condition we will say repeat with file path in file paths so that's going to set file path to a single file in the file path list we'll end our repeat now because we know that our resize image width handler returns true or false if it is successful or not I'll surround that with a condition so I'll say if resize image width and then we'll pass in our arguments file path as string output and our size 450 and then we'll end that with a then statement and again just like always we have to finish off our if statement so I'll say end if at the bottom if for some reason our resize image width handler fails we want to also handle that so we'll put an else statement in where we can write some additional code if the resize image width function happens correctly then we need to remove the original file so we don't just keep processing it over and over and over again so I've created a handler called remove file and we'll go ahead and write that next so we'll start by declaring the handler I'll say on remove file the file end remove file and we'll put in our typical try box so I'll say try on error e and try and upon successful completion we'll return true and if there's a failure we'll return false and just like before we're going to be using a shell script so we need to make sure that we have a POSIX path so I'm going to say set POSIX path to convert path to and then we're going to use our variable the file and make sure that we're specifying POSIX and I'll pull up the man page here for the remove command so I'll say man rm and we can take a look at that and then I'll start writing the script I'll say do shell script rm and we can see that the dash f command tells the remove command to not prompt for confirmation so we'll add that and then we'll say ampersand quoted form of POSIX path so we'll scroll back up and at this point we've dealt with the file when we've handled it successfully but now in the event that we have a problem we need to do something with that file we know we want to move the file into the error folder so we'll do a man mv for move and we can see based on the move command that we want to use the dash f flag so we'll say do shell script mv dash f ampersand quoted form of file path ampersand space ampersand quoted form of errors that tells the move command to move our source file to our error folder without prompting and at this point we can compile to make sure we have no errors and we can save our script make sure we give it an appropriate name we want to change the file format from script to application and it's extremely important that we say stay open after run handler if we didn't select that check mark then after the run handler was complete the whole script would just quit and we would never access our idle handler all right so let's give it a test you can see I've got the script running we'll open up some folders here now that script is watching that input folder every five seconds so when I drag these files over there it's just a matter of up to five seconds before these files will be processed and there you can see it just processed all of them and let's take a look at the results as I flip through all the images you'll see that the width is 450 pixels wide as we would expect thanks so much for watching I hope you found this video interesting entertaining or educational please consider clicking the like button so that it can spread to more people and I'll see you in my next video